Scrooge. Marley was dead. That was certain, because there were people at his funeral. Scrooge was there too. He and Marley were business partners, and he was Marley's only friend. But Scrooge looked very happy at the funeral, because on that day he made some money. Scrooge was a clever businessman. Yes, old Marley was certainly dead. But years later, his name was still there above the office door. Scrooge and Marley. That was the company's name. Sometimes people called Scrooge Scrooge, and sometimes Marley. He always answered. It was all the same to him. Oh, but he was a mean man, Scrooge. He never spent any money, and he never gave any away. He was an old miser, and he was a cold and solitary man. The cold was inside him. You could see it in his red eyes and on his blue nose and thin white lips. You could hear it in his hard voice, and it made his office cold, especially at Christmas. Nobody ever stopped him in the street to say, "My dear Scrooge, how are you? When will you come and see me?" Children never spoke to him, and even dogs ran away from him. But Scrooge didn't care; he liked it. That was what he wanted. One Christmas Eve, Scrooge was sitting in his office. It was only three o'clock in the afternoon. But it was already dark. The weather was very cold, and there was a lot of fog. It came into the office through the windows and doors. Bob Cratchit, Scrooge's clerk, was copying letters in a dark little room, and the old man watched him carefully. Bob had a very, very small fire in his room. It was even smaller than Scrooge's, and he tried to warm his hands at the candle, but he couldn't do it. A merry Christmas, Uncle," said a happy voice, and Scrooge's nephew Fred came in. "Bah!" answered Scrooge. "Humbug!" His nephew looked warm. His face was red, and his eyes were bright. Christmas a humbug, Uncle," he cried, surprised. "You don't mean that, I'm sure." "Yes, I do," said Scrooge. "Merry Christmas! Why are you merry? You're a poor man, aren't you?" "Well, why are you so unhappy? You're rich." "Ah, humbug!" "Don't be angry, Uncle," said Fred. "Why not? There are too many fools in this world. You say Merry Christmas when you're a year older and poorer." That's stupid, Uncle. Please, nephew, you have your own Christmas, and I'll have mine. Leave me alone. But you don't celebrate Christmas, Uncle. Because I never make any money at Christmas. I don't like it. Leave me alone. But Christmas is a good time," said the nephew. "It's the only time in the year when people open their hearts and help each other." They become kind and generous. I like Christmas, and I say God bless it. The clerk in his little room clapped his hands happily and said, "Yes, that's right." Another word from you, and you'll lose your job. Scrooge said to him, "Don't be angry, Uncle. Come and eat with us tomorrow." Said his nephew. "No, go away. I'm busy." But why won't you come? Why did you get married? Scrooge asked. Because I fell in love. Because you fell in love? Bah! That's more stupid than a merry Christmas. Good afternoon. But why don't you ever come to see me, Uncle? Good afternoon," said Scrooge. "Can't we be friends?" "Good afternoon," said Scrooge. "Well, I'm very sorry about this, but I wish you a merry Christmas with all my heart, Uncle." Good afternoon," said Scrooge, and a happy New Year. Good afternoon," said Scrooge. 
So his nephew went to the door and opened it. But before he left, he said, Merry Christmas, to the clerk, who answered with a warm, Happy Christmas. Are you stupid too? Scrooge said. At that moment, two fat gentlemen came in. Excuse me, is this Scrooge and Marley's? said one of them. May I ask if you are Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley is dead. He died on Christmas Eve, seven years ago. At this festive time of the year, Mr. Scrooge, said the man, taking a pen from his pocket, we ask people to give some money to help the poor. There are thousands of people with nothing to eat at Christmas. Aren't there any prisons? asked Scrooge. Yes, lots of them. And what about the workhouses? Aren't there still lots of them? Unfortunately, yes. Good. I'm happy to hear it. We don't think the people in the workhouses or prisons are happy about it. They don't have much to eat or drink, and they're always cold. How much can you give us, sir? Nothing, Scrooge replied. Leave me alone. I don't celebrate Christmas, and I don't give money to lazy people. I help to pay for the workhouses and prisons. That's enough. But many people can't go there, and they'll die in this cold weather. Well, there are too many people in the world already. So that's a good thing. Good afternoon, gentlemen. So the two men went out, and Scrooge continued his work. It became colder and foggier and darker. When a boy came to sing a Christmas carol outside Scrooge's door, he stood up and shouted angrily, Go away! The boy was frightened and ran away very quickly. Finally, it was time to close the office and go home. Scrooge stopped his work and put down his pen. The clerk put on his hat to go. You want all day tomorrow, do you? said Scrooge. If it's all right, sir, yes. It's not all right, Scrooge answered. I must pay you for a day's holiday. It's only once a year, sir. Bah! Every December the 25th, you get money for nothing. Well, arrive here extra early on the 26th. Do you hear me? Yes, sir, said the clerk. And when he left the office, he ran and danced all the way home, because it was Christmas Eve. Marley's ghost! The knocker on the door was large, but it was like hundreds of other door knockers. And he wasn't thinking about Marley when he put his key in the door. So how did he see Marley's face in the knocker? Yes, Marley's face. There was a strange light around it. It looked at Scrooge with its glasses up in its hair, like Marley when he was alive. The hair was moving slowly. The eyes were wide open and the face was very white. Scrooge looked at it for a moment and then it was a knocker again. The sound echoed around the house, but Scrooge wasn't frightened of echoes, and he went slowly up the dark stairs. Then he sat in front of an old fireplace with a very small fire in it. For a moment, he thought he saw Marley's face in the fire. At first, it moved slowly and quietly. But soon it made a very loud sound, and all the bells in the house began to ring too. Scrooge heard a strange noise far away in the house, a noise of metal, like chains. He couldn't believe his eyes. The same face, Marley's face. Scrooge recognised his dead partner's clothes and boots, and he saw a long chain round his transparent body. The chain had heavy cash boxes, 
keys, locks and account books on it. What do you want with me? Much! It was certainly Marley's voice. Who are you? Ask me who I was. Who were you then? In life I was your partner, Jacob Marley. The ghost sat in a chair on the other side of the fireplace. Scrooge said this because he didn't want to show his terror. But the ghost's cold eyes frightened him very much. If I eat this candle, Scrooge continued, I'll see hundreds of ghosts like you, but they'll only be in my head. Then the spirit gave a terrible cry. Ah! and it shook its chain with a tremendous noise. And then he fell out of his chair with horror when the ghost took off the handkerchief and its chin dropped on its chest. Help! he cried with his hands on his face. Oh, why are you here, terrible spirit? Do you believe in me or not? Yes, I do. I, I must, Scrooge replied. And again, the ghost shook its chain with a sad uh. cry. Why are you wearing that chain? Scrooge asked, trembling. So I made this chain for myself, and now I must wear it. I lived like you, Scrooge. Seven years ago, your chain was long and heavy. Now it is very long and very heavy. Again, Scrooge trembled in terror. Help me. I cannot help you, Ebenezer Scrooge, answered the ghost. I... Do you travel fast? Very fast. Oh, but I am a prisoner, cried the phantom, and it shook the chain again. A terrible sound in the silence of the night. But you were a good man of business, Jacob. Business? What was my business? My business was people. My business was charity. My business was love. My business was goodness. But I didn't do anything good. Can't they all come at one o'clock and finish it quickly, Jacob? The second will come on the next night at the same time. The third will come on the night after that, when the church bell strikes twelve midnight. Remember my words. Then the ghost put the handkerchief round its head and began to walk towards the window. He was very frightened, because he could hear a great noise of crying outside. They were moving quickly here and there, and they all wore chains like Marley's ghost. Their cries were very sad. There was one old ghost with a big metal box of money on a chain. In a moment it was with the other ghosts, and all of them disappeared. Did Marley's ghost really come through a locked door? Bah! he said. The first spirit. But it was after two o'clock when I went to bed. He got out of bed and went to the window, but he couldn't see much. Was it all a dream? Was Marley's ghost really here? He said to himself. Suddenly he remembered the ghost's words. The first spirit will come at one o'clock tomorrow morning. It's one o'clock, said Scrooge. And there's nobody here. At that moment, there was a great light in the room, and the curtains of his bed opened. Yes, a hand opened the curtain in front of his face. He sat up and saw a strange person. It was small, like a child, but it was also like an old man. Are you the first spirit? asked Scrooge. Yes, I am, the visitor replied in a quiet voice. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Whose past? 
your part. Why are you here? To help you. Scrooge wanted to say that it was late, the weather was very cold, and his bed was warm. If I touch you here, you won't fall, it said. Then they went through the wall, and suddenly they were standing on a road in the country. This is where I was born. I was a boy here. And he remembered all his old feelings about the place. Are you crying? No, no, answered Scrooge. They shouted, Merry Christmas, to each other. They are all in the past, the ghost said. Scrooge knew all of them, and he felt suddenly happy. Why did his cold eyes and heart become warm with joy? What did Merry Christmas mean to him? He didn't like Christmas. The school is not empty. Scrooge sat down on a chair and cried, because he knew that the little boy was himself many years ago. Poor boy. Oh, I would like to... But it's too late now. What is it? asked the spirit. You see, there was a poor boy outside my office last night. Let's see another Christmas. Then everything changed. The boy was bigger, and the room looked older and darker. I've come to bring you home! 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 Home, Fanny? The boy asked. Yes, home forever and ever! The girl <laughs> laughed. Father is kinder now, and he wants you to come home. Oh, you'll never come back to this horrible school, and we'll be together for Christmas. I'm so happy. She began to pull him towards the door. Bring Master Scrooge's luggage to the coach, somebody shouted in a terrible voice. It was the teacher, and when he came in, the boy was very frightened. Goodbye, Master Scrooge, said the teacher in his terrible voice. But when he got into the coach with his sister, he felt happy. Your sister had a very good heart, said the ghost. Yes. Scrooge remembered the conversation with his nephew in his office the afternoon before, and he felt bad about it. Suddenly, they were standing at the door of an office in the city. I know this place very well. And uh, there's old Mr. Fezziwig, alive again. Oh, dear old Fezziwig. Mr. Fezziwig was a fat, happy man with a red face. Stop your work! Scrooge, now a young man, came in with his friend Dick. It's Christmas Eve, boys. We must celebrate, said Fezziwig. So they put away all the books and papers and made a big fire. Mrs. Fezziwig and the three Miss Fezziwigs arrived. And then a lot of young people came, and everybody began to dance to the music. Then there were games and more dances, cake and hot wine, and more dances. And there was lots of roast beef and beer, and mince pies, too. At eleven o'clock, everybody said, Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas! And the party finished. While Scrooge was watching all this, he laughed and sang and wanted to dance. You and Dick and everybody loved Mr. Fezziwig, the ghost said to him. So why did you all love him so much? A small thing, answered Scrooge. No, Fezziwig was our manager, so he could make us happy or unhappy. He gave us a lot of happiness, and that was like a fortune in money. Then Scrooge looked sadly at the ghost. I was thinking that I, I would like to speak to my clerk now. Come, there isn't much time, said the ghost. It was himself again, and his face showed the first signs of the problems of business 
and a passion for money. He was sitting next to a young girl dressed in black. You love something more than me, Ebenezer, she said. My feelings for you haven't changed, Belle. But you have changed. You aren't happy with me, and you don't want to marry me. I haven't got any money, so you don't want me. Don't show me any more. Take me home. There's one more scene. No, no more. I don't want to see it. But suddenly they were in a room where a beautiful young girl was sitting near a big fire. The room was full of children, and there was a lot of noise. But Belle and her daughter liked it, and the daughter began to play with the children. Then the father came in with a lot of Christmas presents. He gave them to the children, and they laughed and shouted happily. The father sat by the fire with his wife and daughter. Scrooge looked at them and thought. How sad that I don't have a wife and daughter. Belle, said the husband to his wife. Spirit, take me away, said Scrooge. These things happen, the ghost answered, and they cannot be changed. Please take me back. I can't watch this any more. At that moment, the spirit disappeared and Scrooge was in his bedroom again. The Second Spirit Scrooge woke up, opened his bed curtain, and looked around. Come in, Ebenezer. The room was his room, but it was different. On the floor there was a lot of food. Turkey, goose, chicken, rabbit, pork and sausages, as well as mince pies, puddings, fruit, cakes and hot punch. And on the sofa sat a very large man, a giant, and he was holding up a torch. Scrooge went and stood in front of this giant, but he didn't look at it. I am the ghost of Christmas present, said the spirit. Spirit, Scrooge said, take me where you want. Touch my clothes. When Scrooge did this, the room disappeared, and he stood in the city streets on Christmas morning. Then a lot of poor people came along the street with their Christmas dinners of goose or chicken. The spirit took Scrooge to one of these shops and touched some of the dinners with its torch. After a while, Scrooge followed the ghost to the suburbs of the city. Mrs. Cratchit and her daughter Belinda were preparing the table for Christmas dinner. Suddenly, two little Cratchits ran in and shouted that the goose was ready at the baker's. Belinda made some apple sauce. Mrs. Cratchit prepared the potatoes and the gravy. Martha put the hot plates on the table. When Mrs. Cratchit cut the goose, everybody cried, Hooray! again, and Tiny Tim hit the table with his knife. Then Mrs. Cratchit brought in the Christmas pudding with brandy on it. Bob loved his son very much, and he held Tiny Tim's thin little hand. I see an empty chair, replied the ghost, and a small crutch. Say he will live, kind spirit. If the future is not changed, he will not see another Christmas. Scrooge didn't answer and he didn't look in the ghost's eyes. He felt very bad. Those were wicked words, Ebenezer Scrooge. The ghost continued. Do you think you can decide who will live or die? Are you better than this poor man's child, or millions like him? Perhaps you are worse in God's eyes. Scrooge trembled and looked at the ground. Mr. Scrooge, let's drink to Mr. Scrooge. It was Bob Cratchit, and he was holding up his glass. 
It's Christmas Day. I know that, but I would like to tell Mr Scrooge what I think of him. You know how bad he is. My dear, it's Christmas Day. Well, I'll drink to him because it's Christmas. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, Mr Scrooge, but you won't be merry or happy, I know. The children drank to Scrooge too, but his name was like a dark shadow in the room, and for a few minutes they were silent. But the family was contented now because it was Christmas, and he looked at Tiny Tim very often before the family scene vanished. Scrooge and the ghost walked along the streets and saw great fires in the houses where families and friends were enjoying Christmas together. <laughs> he said that Christmas was a humbug. The nephew laughed. Well, he's a strange man and he isn't very happy. I'll say, how are you, Uncle Scrooge? Come and eat with us. Then they played some music and sang. When they played 20 questions, Scrooge forgot that they couldn't hear him and he shouted his answers. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to the old man, said Fred. Scrooge wanted to say this to Fred, but the scene vanished and he and the ghost travelled again. Look, look down here. The spirit opened its coat and Scrooge saw two children on the ground, a boy and a girl. Their eyes were sad. They looked older than children, and they were ugly, like monsters. And aren't there any workhouses? Oh, no, no, those are my words, Scrooge cried. He looked around for the ghost, but it wasn't there. The last of the spirits. Scrooge couldn't see its face or its body because it was wearing long black clothes and a black hood. Are you the ghost of Christmas yet to come? He asked. Are you going to show me things from the future? Scrooge asked. His legs were trembling a lot and so he couldn't follow the ghost when it moved away. I'm very frightened of you, but I know that you want to help me, so I'll go with you. Please. Its long hand pointed ahead. All right, I'll come, said Scrooge. When the ghost stopped near three men, he could hear their conversation. No, I don't know much, said one very fat man. I only know he's dead. Uh, when did he die? Another man asked. What about his money? Asked a man with a very red face. The funeral will be very cheap because only a few people will go. The fat man continued. I'll go if there's a big lunch. The red-faced man said. Then one of them said. Well, he's finally dead. Yes, I've heard. Answered his companion. Old Marley died seven years ago, and this ghost was showing him the future. Wasn't he there in the future? Silent and black, the ghost stood near him. A man of about seventy with grey hair sat near a fire and smoked his pipe. I thought, what a pity. This is a very fine shirt, but nobody will wear it again. I worked very hard for him. But he never gave me anything. So we get the profits now that he's dead. <laughs> Scrooge watched this in horror. There was only an old sheet with something under it, the body of a dead man. The ghost pointed at the head, but Scrooge couldn't pull down the sheet and look at the dead man's face. Not a man, woman or child to say that he was kind to them in life and to remember him with love. Then he heard the sound of rats behind the walls. But the ghost still pointed at the dead man's head. I understand, Scrooge said. But I can't do it. 
I ask you to show me somebody who is sorry that this man is dead. The ghost took him to Bob Cratchit's house. I remember when he walked very fast with... with tiny Tim on his shoulder, said the mother. But tiny Tim was very light, and his father loved him so much. He was dead. Bob kissed the little face. Then he went downstairs. When I told him, he said he was very sorry and wanted to help us. He's a very good man, said Mrs. Cratchit. Scrooge said to the ghost, Oh, please tell me who that dead man was. The ghost took him near his office, but it didn't stop. Scrooge ran to the window of his office and looked in. Everything was different, including the man at the desk. Am I going to learn the dead man's name now? asked Scrooge. Is it really necessary for these things to happen, or are they only possible? The ghost didn't answer. I mean, if men change their lives and become better, will the future change too? Is this what you want to tell me? The ghost was silent. Scrooge went slowly towards the grave, still trembling. He read the name on the gravestone. Ebenezer Scrooge. He fell on his knees. I was the dead man in the bed. Oh, spirit! Oh, no, no! Listen, I I've changed. I will celebrate Christmas with all my heart. Scrooge continued. Oh, tell me that I can clean the name off this stone. Scrooge held up his hands to the ghost but suddenly it vanished. A, A Merry Christmas, Christmas, Mr. Scrooge! Jacob Marley, God bless Christmas! Then he put on his clothes. But the future is not here yet, and I can change it, he said, <laughs> laughing and crying at the same time. <laughs> what shall I do first? Oh, I feel as light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. A Merry Christmas to everybody. A Happy New Year to all the world. He danced in the sitting room and looked around. There's the place where the ghost of Christmas present sat. It's all true. It all happened. <laughs> and he laughed and laughed. What's today? Scrooge shouted to a boy in the street. What's today, my boy? It's Christmas Day. Christmas Day? Scrooge said happily to himself. Hey, boy! Do you know the butcher's shop in the next street? Of course. You're an intelligent boy. Do you know if they've sold that big turkey in the window? You mean the one as big as me? What a nice boy, said Scrooge. If you come back in five minutes, I'll give you half a crown. I'll send it to Bob Cratchit, Scrooge said. <laughs> he won't know who sent it. And he wrote Bob's address on a piece of paper. When the butcher's man arrived with the enormous turkey, Scrooge told him to call a cab. He paid for the turkey and the cab, and he gave the boy half a crown. A Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you! And Scrooge answered in the same way. How do you do, my dear sirs? A Merry Christmas to you! And Mr. Scrooge? asked one of them. Listen, Scrooge spoke quietly in the man's ear. Are you serious, Mr. Scrooge? The man was very surprised. Can you do me that favour? My dear Scrooge, that's very generous. I don't know what to say to thank you. He watched the people, he kissed little children, he played with some dogs, he looked at everything with love, and he felt very happy. Can I come in, Fred? Come in? Of course, Uncle, you're very welcome. 
Everybody was happy to see Scrooge, and he was happy to see them. They ate a wonderful dinner, and then they played wonderful games and had a wonderful time. Scrooge was in his office early the next morning. Hello, Scrooge said in his old, angry voice. You're late. I'm very sorry, sir. Bob answered. It's only once a year, sir, said poor Bob. Well, my friend, I hope not, Scrooge said with a big smile. Because I'm going to give you a bigger salary. Bob trembled. This will be your happiest Christmas. Yes, I'm going to give you a lot more money, and I'm going to help your poor family. Come on, make a very big fire, and let's have a drink, Bob Cratchit. Scrooge gave Bob more money, helped his family, and did much more. Tiny Tim did not die, and Scrooge was a second father to him. He became a good friend, a good manager, and a good man. A few people laughed at him, of course, but he knew that some people always laugh at anything new, strange, and good. He often laughed now, and that was the most important thing to him. He didn't see the spirits again, and he celebrated every Christmas with all his heart. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel to see the latest videos. Thank you.